Hi everyone and welcome to the next game in the series on the greatest games of all time. This time we're going to look at a superb game from the Candidates Tournament of 1973. Grandmaster David Bronstein had the white pieces. He was one of the great Soviet players of the era, an incredibly creative player who came very close to defeating Botvinnik in 1951 for the world title. His opponent was the brilliant Serbian Grandmaster Lubomir Lobojevic, who was rated number three in the world at, the, at one time and was also a superbly talented player. Bronstein opened with e4, after which came knight f6, which is Alekhine's defense and rarely seen at top level chess these days, although it has some notable devotees such as Grandmaster Baburin, who's one of Ireland's top players. Bronstein elected for the main line with e5, reacting in the normal way to the provocative move knight f6. Play continued with the book line knight d5 and now d4, and in hypermodern style black allows white a strong pawn center in the opening with hopes of undermining it later. Now Lobojevic challenged the center directly with d6, next came c4, kicking the knight for a second time but theory has shown that there's no way for white to prove a decisive advantage as a result of this. So knight b6, now f4 in order to maintain the pawn at e5 and making this opening the very aggressive and sharp four pawns attack variation of Alekhine's defense. So d takes e5, f takes e5 and we can see that white has been allowed this huge pawn center as mentioned but it comes at the price of creating weaknesses in the white position. Black has several ways to challenge the pawn center in Alekhine's defense and Lobojevic elected for c5 which is the only direct pawn push to do so in this particular variation. Other common moves are knight c6 and bishop f5 and Bronstein again pushed with d5 which is the most popular choice and we're still well within book lines. After e6 again challenging the white pawn center which Bronstein defended with knight c3. Next came e takes d5 and c takes d5. So white has a very strong pawn center but is it advanced too, for, too far is the, uh, the question. And uh, similarly to hanging pawns these two pawns can never be defended by other pawns because the c and the f pawns are gone and depending on how well each side plays they can either become an asset for white's attacking chances or a liability that he will be tied down to defending. However, even at this stage black is forced to play accurately or face a powerful attack after only 10 moves with no sacrificial investment from white. This is a very sharp line as I said and it's rarely seen at top level but it's one that Lobojevic was an expert in playing both sides of and so he was willing to give Bronstein this apparent early edge. In this particular line white will sacrifice material in spectacular fashion to gain an attack as you will see. Play continued with c4 limiting the scope of white's dark square bishop and uh, it's pretty much the only move to retain any chances of a later counterattack for black. Essentially it's a pawn sacrifice as you'll see later. So now knight f3 and bishop g4 which is uh, <coughs> excuse me, pinning the knight to the queen and Bronstein responded to it by breaking the pin immediately and aggressively with queen d4 which is a very nice move that achieves several things. First of all it attacks the bishop on f3 and bishop takes f3 is the best move dis and uh, you know despite giving up the bishop pair it uh, means g takes f3 is forced and white's pawns are not ideal but his edge in the position overall is still significant. A couple of the ideas behind queen d4 as well as breaking the pin are to stop a later queen h4 check and also prophylaxis against bishop c5 at uh, some moment but black can play instead bishop b4 which is aiming to take out one of the defenders of the d5 pawn but thanks again to that multi-purpose move queen d4 white is now also able to play bishop takes c4 which is maintaining the d5 pawn and black is more than willing to give away the c pawn in this line 
because he will be willing to oh sorry he'll be winning it back with interest later as you'll see so castles and now rook g1 because the exchange on f3 opened up the g file and Bronstein of course is going to use it for attack and as you can see this is a very dynamic and imbalanced opening choice from both sides although personally I think I would avoid it with the black pieces an interesting thing to note is that bishop h6 was used in a simul in Dublin to defeat Grandmaster Baburin some years ago very sharp variation white has total compensation for the piece after g takes h6 and rook g1 check I think it was a prepared variation for the particular simultaneous exhibition but anyway in this game Bronstein played rook g1 and uh, Lobojevic answered with g6 and after this move Fritz believes white to be only very slightly better with bishop g5 gaining a tempo on the on the queen because now comes a queen c7 which is snatching the initiative and black is significantly better there's a double attack on uh, the bishop here at c4 and um, next is coming bishop c5 which is going to win the exchange and in order to avoid this white can play rook g4 here however Bronstein chose bishop b3 allowing bishop c5 and you know the loss of well in, in actual fact it's an entire rook as opposed to the exchange and you know naturally a player of Bronstein's caliber is not going to let this happen within book lines and he's more than prepared to give up his g1 rook to gain attacking chances on the dark squares around the black king and enormous tactical problems for black to solve as well as his lack of development here on the queen side so queen f4 and now bishop takes g1 and Bronstein goes a full rook down with his king still in the center in order to gain attacking chances which is a very gutsy decision and many writers and commentators have looked at this game and to this day opinions are still divided as to whether bishop takes g1 is a winning move or a blunder so Bronstein continued with d6 which advances in the center gains a tempo on the queen and also unleashes the bishop here on b3 so queen c8 is what Lobojevic played which is perhaps the first inaccuracy of the game and an indicator that he was now out of his preparation in subsequent games in this line he played queen c5 which is definitely better one line goes knight e4 gaining a tempo on the queen but uh, now queen d4 and there are huge tactical complications here of course but with perfect play black is slightly better and should be able to defend okay so queen c8 anyway and here Bronstein played the first of many great moves in this game king e2 brazenly leaving the king in the, in the center and castling instead leaves the uh, c3 knight pinned and it's a key piece in white's attack and as this, this move threatens to win the bishop although that would mean that black is still the exchange ahead and black is still better here with perfect play but at this moment Lobojevic played a further inaccuracy with bishop c5 simply to preserve the bishop far better was queen c5 although the tactics and complications remain massive but as before black is better in all variations best play appears to be e6 if instead knight e4 queen b5 check is very strong so e6 queen f2 check king d3 and knight eight d7 which is a key move in many of these variations black returns some material in order to go into a still winning end game although the white bishops remain extremely powerful on this fairly open board so e takes d7 knight takes d7 knight e4 attacking the queen and you know incredibly this is the best move despite allowing queen d4 check king c2 rook a c8 check forces knight c3 now queen f2 check again forces queen d2 or white is totally lost but now queen takes d2 king takes d2 bishop takes h2 and black has great chances of winning all resulting end games 
So, bishop c5. And now knight e4. And with the massive threat of knight f6 check combined with queen h4, which is going to force mate. And, you know, white's activity is now more than compensating for his material deficit. Black has a few defenses to choose from, and Lobojevic went for knight 8 d7, which is getting another piece out, which is surely a good idea. And, you know, in all of these variations, black has to constantly calculate the complications of white's pawn push e6, which makes defending very difficult. And, you know, it's one of the advantages of having a mobile and stronger pawn center than your opponent in such a position. Okay, that's the end of part one.